Hi, thanks and welcome. Uh, I'm Andrew Finn from uh, TDI. What you're looking at here is a 45 caliber Chris Vector SMG, the submachine gun. Uh, this is the most novel and innovative technology to hit the weapons market in over 120 years. Primary reason is that we use a very novel, low recoil operations device. That device is this. This device sits in the weapon as such. Now every weapon has a bolt operating group and historically the bolt comes back in a very linear fashion and hits a buffer spring assembly and exerts a linear force into the shoulder. Now the nervous system doesn't move quickly enough so where the body interfaces with the buttstock you get muzzle rise. Now some people can lean into the weapon and counteract that but the fact of the matter is, is recoil is a big problem and it's always been a big problem until today. Now where most companies will go ahead and offer their weapon with an additional butt pad or a buffer spring, um, that just masks the problem. That just puts a band-aid on the real issue. What you're looking at here, this is the Super V system. It contains a bolt, a slider, a guide rod and a guide spring, and a base plate. This is how the mechanism sits in the weapon. When the round goes off, the gases push the bolt back, rearward and upward into the slider like so. At that point, it reaches the apex. It pushes downward on the slider, collapsing the guide rod and the guide spring over the base plate. So let me make things real simple. You have a bolt, a linear bolt. It's a uh, buffer spring assembly. You get muzzle lift. In our fashion, you have a downward moving bolt where the energy pushes down and you eliminate muzzle lift. Let me give you an example. This is a five and a half pound weapon with a five and a half inch barrel that shoots a standard 230 grain 45 cal ACP round. Not a gap round, an ACP round. It is built around a Glock 21 magazine, standard 13 round Glock 21 magazine. But what fun would that be if we didn't have a high cap mag to go with it? So what we've done is we've worked with Magpul Industries out of Colorado and we have devised a sleeve system here. The sleeve, you take the base plate off the Glock you slide the Glock up through this sleeve, which is an additional 17 rounds, put the base plate on the bottom of the magazine, or on the bottom of the extension, we supply you with a different spring, use the same follower, and now you have a 30 round magazine that not only works with your Chris, but also works with your Glock. Now why did we go ahead and make this? Well, we tried pretty much every high cap mag out there that had a Glock type configuration, and we're running this submachine gun at about 1,000 rounds a minute. When you take a 30 stick of 230 grain and you're running at 1,000 rounds a minute, you have uh, a lot of harmonics that drive down into the magazine well. And it really messes up the feeding, the chambering, and the extracting. And if you don't have those three things, you pretty much have a very expensive bat because it's not going to shoot. So we couldn't buy one, so we had to go ahead and make one. And again, working with Magpul, we uh, have a very robust system here. Now, it is a polymer sleeve, and it is made of the same polymer that our weapon is on talk to you a little bit more about the gun. This is the military and law enforcement version. Again, this has a folding stock like so. We are coming out with an SBR version. It's going through BATF uh, approval right now, but it'll largely look very similar to this, be semi-automatic only. What you'll notice on this version is it has a full auto capability, it has a burst mechanism, and is semi-automatic as well. So with three different modes of fire. It is ambidextrous, so you can uh, work it with your uh, left side or right side. It is a right eject. Now, some lefties concern themselves as to whether or not those rounds will go into their back of their shirt or across their face. These rounds eject up and out and over the shooter, so it does not inhibit your shooting ability at all. The weapons do come with a standard Picatinny rail on the top, Picatinny rail on the bottom, and points on either side of the weapon for small rails. Now, what you also notice here is there is a flashlight that's on the inside. Now this is an Assurefire Executive Series E1L light. It's a very small light. It fits in the nose cone of the weapon, and we offer a seven inch tape switch that comes out of the upper portion of the receiver, this fluted area, and the tape switch tapes down nicely either to the foregrip or on your magazine well. Let's talk about disassembly for a minute. This weapon has four pins. One, two, three, four. They're regular push pins. You use your Mark I thumb, you push those out. You take the two on the top out, the upper and lower receiver separate, you take the two on the bottom out, and the entire working mechanism falls completely out. I want to show you something. Nope, oh, where'd it go? There it is. 
You'll notice on this mechanism, you'll notice lugs on either side of the bolt. You'll also notice extrusions on the side of the slider here. When this mechanism is placed together, this is what you have, like so. There are grooved raceways on the inside of the slider, on, I'm sorry, grooved raceways on the inside of the receiver plates on both the left and right side. It is as simple as lining up these lugs and those extrusions with those, uh, with those rails and dropping the weapon right back in and reinserting your pins. Now, if you're concerned about recoil, let me assure you that this weapon weighing five and a half pounds with a five and a half inch barrel has far less recoil than your typical MP5. We know this because we've been working with the U.S. Army for the better part of three years. Their small arm center of excellence up at Picatinny Arsenal, New Jersey, fabulous group of engineers, tested our weapon for us. We had nothing to do with it. We simply stood back. They put it in a bench test fixture, hooked up strain gauges, accelerometers to it, and a machine pulled the trigger. Now, that's a fancy way of saying that's how we measure recoil and muzzle lift. They did it with an MP5, which, as you all know, weighs about six pounds and shoots a nine millimeter. Our weapon generated 1.8 degrees of muzzle lift per shot. The MP5 generates 8.2 degrees of muzzle lift per shot. That's right, shooting a nine millimeter. So, this compact weapon, like so, is very easy to control, very concealable. We say be careful to that wayward husband or boyfriend because now your wife or girlfriend can be very accurate. Um, let me show you a little bit about the weapon here. On the left side, you've got your charging handle. It's elongated and a bit larger because for people who might be wearing gloves or have bigger hands, it's easier to reach the handle. When you pull it back just 90 degrees and you look at the bolt, the bolt actually moves back about a quarter of an inch. So you can do an automatic press check to see if you have a round in the chamber without having to completely cycle your weapon and expend a casing. There is about a two and a half inch throw on the weapon. It's very short. It only needs to, the bolt only needs to retract long enough to take that next round. The bolt does lock to the rear on the last round fired. We also have a bolt lock mechanism here on the left. Locks the bolt to the rear, bolt release right here. On this particular version, our variant comes with these sights here. If you have your Picatinny rail, these sights are removable. They lock down in a pistol configuration as such. We did work with Magpul on these as well because they're specifically made for this weapon. However, when you push the buttons on the side, you'll notice that they do pop up so you can co-witness with your electronic sight. Another feature about them is they are spring-loaded. So you don't have to worry about walking through a forest or in reeds and having your front sight boat rift, ripped off or messing up with your um, uh, rear sight here. Again, we do have a civilian version. The civilian version is virtually identical to the military version with two exceptions. The uh, military version has a five and a half inch barrel and has three modes of fire, semi-automatic, burst, and full auto. The civilian wor version, which is BATF approved, it is available for sale in uh, 45 states right now, has a 16 inch barrel and a semi-automatic only. We at TDI do not have different standards for the weapons that go into the commercial market or weapons that go into the military market. It's the same types of components that go into each weapon. Everybody wants a weapon to go bang when they pull the trigger. They don't want it to go click, and we're here to go ahead and make that happen. If you have any further information or you want to go ahead and check out some of the specs on the weapons, you can visit our website at www.chris, K-R-I-S-S, hyphen, T-D-I.com.